Failure Mode and Effect Analysis, or FMEA. What is it? Well, it is definitely an important part in your Operational Excellence Toolbox. Hello, I'm Dom. Welcome to my channel, where I talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we will be answering, well, basically a question from one of the viewers, and it was on how am I going to do like a 5Y or something like that for a future product, or maybe sort of predict what can go wrong. Ah, there is a tool for that that is very often used. There, there are different tools, but the basic thing you really need to master for that is the FMEA. And then in this case, specifically a design FMEA where you do it upfront before you really have the process in place, but those are small details. The failure mode and effect analysis is a core tool for operational excellence, continuous improvement, and we'll go through that today. Now, the basic thing is that an FMEA is actually a risk assessment. And it's a risk assessment that also afterwards proposes improvements. But as most risk assessments, it has this sort of risk times problem, times how often does it happen idea in it. And this, it can be a really quantitative method, although most companies will go for sort of a uh, a structured but still subjective scaling for this. I'll get to those details as well. What we look at in that analysis of failure modes and their effect is how bad is it times how probable is it that it will happen times if it does happen, how quickly will we detect it? Or in fact, this is of course a bit the other way around. How long will it go undetected? Now, what does that mean? But this, by the way, it will generate a score. So what you will generally see is that companies use a five to 10 point scale for each of these. Um, a six point scale for each of them is also quite common. And the fir very first bit of advice is make those scales for your own company. Now, to get a little bit of an idea, the severity is quite often uh, like a six is lethal stuff. And a one is, you know, only a real expert would notice that there is a problem. And a three uh, or four, so the mid-level, uh, that is, well, you know, you have some sort of beauty problems to your product. Uh, it's definitely visible uh, or there is, um, but, but it doesn't really uh, kill the function. Um, and safety, it's a bit more on, you know, probably get some minor incidents like that this might become first aid cases or at least lead to uh, not all too pleasant situations but we're not in the accident area yet. For probability if we're scaling one to five ish then uh, a one is this would almost never happen. We haven't really seen it yet so at least it's, it's really not yearly uh, and then a two is yearly, a three is monthly, a four is weekly and a, uh, five is you know, basically daily, we have the chance. Doesn't mean it happened every day, but you know, we've also got a couple of days where it happens a few times, is an example scale. And detection here, this one really depends on sort of how do we see that in our industry. Um, I would not advise going for a percentage scale, so not something like a five is a zero to 20% detection chance, a four is a 20 to 40% because it's very difficult to determine. Instead, go for things like a five is, or a six, but is if it really takes an expert doing additional checks to maybe see it. That is sort of common people translation. We're not gonna see this unless we're very specifically looking for it. While a one would be, Basically, our systems tell it, right? So we've got a control system that, okay, it's probably going to be after uh, the the process, but maybe even before. So this depends on how you scale for, for your industry, but we're, we're going to detect it because there's an automated detection system. And you can even say a one is if detection system is on the input side. So we're going to detect a problem already before it made actual problem products. And then a two would be a detection system on the output side. And here we also have things like we have a well laid out maintenance plan and in those checks we will see it, right? And then if you have sort of daily, weekly checks that will find it, so 
the operator doing their first level maintenance checks, they will find it. That's a low score. If it is the specialized technicians that will find it during their monthly or so, uh, weekly, monthly, then we have a bit higher score. So that's the idea of detection. Severity, probability, detection together that will make a score. And the higher the score, the worse this failure mode is, the worse the effect is. Now, what then with that severity? So how do you decide it for your product or your process or your industry? It depends on what it's intended to do. So we have to look at what is it? If it is a car, then severity are uh, things that will go wrong during driving, right? That, that might cause accidents. That is very high severity. But still pretty serious severity for a car is if the doors won't close or the engine won't start again. I mean, we're not talking lethal here, but the function of the car is seriously damaged. Minor stuff will be, you know, minor nuisances, a, a lamp not working properly, especially one of those dashboard indicators, or maybe there is a scratching chance or there is a strange noise, you know, lower stuff. So we look at function. If we're talking medicine, then of course the high severities are in lethal stuff or the medicine just not doing what it's intended to do. The lower things are in a bit of a strange off flavor or maybe even you know something with the packaging is not 100%. That is why what you also often see is that in this part of the analysis, we look at critical to quality, the CTQs. So which factors are really important, which are not so important. Now, during an FMEA, we will go through a whole list of problems, of failure and failure modes. But here we also already get into the probability side of things, because what we are looking for is one problem. So one thing happening that by itself makes a problem. This is one of the basic assumptions under an FMEA. Uh, you can argue with that discussion, and many people do. The original FMEA says we have a single failure point. Which also, uh, so a single failure point means one thing goes wrong, and then you have a problem, you have a defect or a failure. Or, and we also want to then know what specifically is it. And so that is the failure mode that is a specific way that a failure presents itself. This is what we are putting into our FMEA tables, right? The failure mode analysis. So a failure mode on, and, he, and here we, we see both the input and the output sort of thing, a failure mode on the, um, the hinges of the car have expanded too much. And because of that, the uh, the door body, the door, the door slams into the body. It doesn't close. So this is a, why does that happen? And the door not closing on like the beam side, that is a failure mode. Specifically also a uh, bread having a fungal infection uh, because of a leakage in the packaging. That is a failure mode and already with a cause in there, you see? And these are very interesting to know, of course. You want to know what is going wrong and the pretty direct why. So how is it going wrong? And we do this for things that just by themselves make a problem. But do you see here, we, especially on that causal side, we can also get good clues on how likely is it that this is going to happen? How stable is our process in this regard? Now, when we know that, you of course are already jumping for, let's make improvements, but we do also want to know the detection part. Remember, we're doing this for the, the whole set of quality parameters linked to our product uh, and the uh, function parameters, so safety as well, productivity and quality. The detection, that means how good are we at controlling it? How good are our controls? Do we have a control system that just sees things before they happen? Because when the input side of your process goes wrong, 
your control mechanism already automatically picks it up uh, and alerts or stops the, the line, whatever is the best solution. So basically, yes, these can happen, but before the product actually reached the market, we already stopped it, or <laughs> don't we really know? And it's not for nothing that we multiply it over there. So if we have things that are pretty serious uh, with a medium to high probability, but a very good detection as well, as a complete risk, they are not that high. They may still be super expensive, so you will want to do something on the probability. Now, as a rule of thumb, severity is the most difficult to affect because the things we're looking at, uh, they're generally baked into the design, right? Baked into the function of whatever product we're making is how bad is it when a specific failure occurs? So sometimes the product can indeed be re-engineered to remove it, but more likely we will be working on the probability of it happening and the detection. Now, working on, on the detection tends to be cheaper at first because it is faster, it's easier to implement, but it does mean scrapping a lot of product. So working on the probability is the better thing, right? The root causes, working on the cause mechanisms. But when we're looking at failure mode and effect analysis, we take both of them into account. And then, well, technically we take all three of them into account, but mainly those two. And then we also look, are there any improvements to be made? Can we make our systems easier, more stable? Can we change a bit in how quickly we react to the inputs to make sure that the probability goes down, that the detection, the non-detection goes down and this whole number goes down. So that is basically what you do when you do an FMEA. You make a big table with a whole bunch of uh, single failure points with their failure mode and what caused it. And then based on that failure mode, you say, okay, so how important is it to the function? Okay, what is its severity? Right? That's in there. Then, how does it happen? How likely is it? Which controls do we have in place? So, which detection chance do we have? And then we generate a score. And then you see a number of them will be with a pretty high score. So if you use one to five things, you will get anywhere between one, 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 so that is one, or five, 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 it becomes 125. And if you use such scales, then somewhere around 20 is probably your cutoff point where you say, yeah, that's okay. And then if you get way over it, the higher you get, the uh, more reason you have to work on it. This is a prioritization model as well, not just know-how. And from that, you're gonna make those improvements. So you also, in many FMEA uh, templates, will see that behind the, the current state rating, you also have the, and what's my improvement? and then which severity probability detection will flow out of that with which new score. That way you immediately use it as an input for your process improvements, for your improvement planning. But the pure FMEA itself, just as a, a large table of all of the things that are important to the function of your product that could go wrong, how they could go wrong, and do we see them? So that's why you understand why we can do a quick FMEA where we just really only do these things without too much thesis behind it. We can do a process FMEA where we look at a current process that we have. We go through failure modes. We can do a design FMEA where we look at a new machine or a new product and we try to think of which failures might occur. So there's different reasons and times to do this FMEA but the end goal every time is the same. We get a good list of what might go wrong and how that might go wrong and which one of those are likely to hurt us the most because they have a high score. Those are our prime candidates for improvement. Preferably by lowering the probability because severity is usually not very realistic. But if not, let's at least seriously enhance the detection chance. Now, one thing on that detection the good thing, of course, is if you have got a much better detection, 
you will learn way quicker when it happens, which will give you very good clues to the causal mechanism, which will give you a good chance of really fighting it. So don't be disparaged if you don't really know yet what the causes completely are and how likely and how to reduce that. Go for control first, and then you have more data to work on reducing the chance as well. So that is an FMEA. Um, you will find different templates, but they will all look like a table of failures with basically these categories as columns. The one thing I do want to leave you with is please do not just do these. Right? So customers will expect them. Uh, maybe they're a standard part of your new product development or things like that. But when it, it's quite a bit of work to do this one well. If you do an FMEA, please do it with the serious goal of improving something, of doing something with it. Right? So these should not be exercises just to make some auditor happy or uh, to sort of send a document to a client. Use it to learn about your processes. That is what Six Sigma Operational Excellence Lean is all about. Learn about your own process so that you can make it better, more effective, and make more money with it. Because if you are the best in your industry, you are going to make a handsome profit and you can be proud of your system. So that's what you use it for. I hope you like that. Uh, if you have more FMEA questions or something you know related to this, please do put them in the comments below. I love uh, working off your questions as well. I make these videos for your benefit. And don't forget to hit that like button as well. For now, I leave you with your failure mode and effects analysis. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the continuous improvement journey.